The following is an actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast featuring a bunch of nerds stuck in their homes across the country. Listener discretion is advised. We don't know what the hell they're going to come up with next. This is Call of the Deep. Hello to all my guys, gals, and non-binary pals of audio podcast land, and welcome to another episode of Call of the Deep, a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition actual play podcast. I am your lovely Dungeon Master, Mikey. You can follow me on my personal social medias at PopCultureGeek, but you can also follow us collectively here at the D&D Vibe Tribe Productions, where we have a lot going on so make sure to give us a like and follow to stay up to date on everything we got going on lots of actual play podcasts lots of regular pop culture podcasts it's a great time for all as always i can never do this alone without my cast of amazing players so we're gonna go around and do some introductions real quick they can plug their socials and any projects they got going on and then we will get into the episode proper uh, my name's Josh. I'm only joshing you on Twitch and TikTok. I play Theron Hammerstone. He's a dwarven ranger who's traveling some to find good stories to tell his grandkids. All right, next person on the chopping block to give themselves an introduction is the one and only JC. Hi, I'm JC Vanguard. I am playing Tidek. I'm a dragonborn fighter sorcerer. I have a couple social medias. You can find me on TikTok as JC Vanguard. Next person to give themselves a good old introduction is the one and only JVL. Hi, uh, this is John Van Luling. I am playing Hugh Man Being, the uh, Simic hybrid druid of the group. Next person joining us tonight is Amador. Hello, I'm Amador, your favorite uh, normal guy in a cast full of talented people. Um, today I will be playing your lovely goblin, your favorite bite risk. That's pretty much it. All right. Next person to get their introduction is our other Josh Preacher. <laughs> hello. Hello, everyone. I am MG Preacher. You can follow me at MG Preacher on TikTok and MG Preacher Mark 2 on Instagram. But as my paladin, daughter, I will be playing. Order of the Cross and Shoe. I did not realize we had uh, a paladin that was also an automaton. <laughs> and then, of course, ladies and gentlemen, last but certainly not least, we have a new player joining this cavalcade of crazies Ooh. here. <laughs> But as I mentioned, we have a new player joining us, and I'm going to let him introduce himself. So, uh, Wes, the floor is yours. Hi, I'm Wes. Uh, You might be able to hear me on Nights of Pain telling playing Mac. Okay, so we'll pick up right back where we left off with introductions out of the way. So as you guys follow Fila through the marketplace, I mean, nothing really has changed over the last couple of days that you have been gone. But as you make your way into the main hub of the marketplace, where some of you encountered Majila. Hello? Do you need this? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> so as you make your way through the marketplace, you notice that when you get to the central hub, it's completely different than where you guys remember from visiting it prior. All the stalls that have lined up this main entranceway have been kind of pushed to the side or spread out. And have made way for lots and lots of different individuals, tents and open air kind of stalls and things like that. But in order to give you a better picture of what you guys 
kind of see when you walk into it. Let us pull up the map. So as you guys make your way in to this area, you guys see that, like I mentioned, all the stalls have kind of been pushed out for a little bit, making room for a plethora of different tents. And from where you're currently standing at, you can see that some are still typical merchant stalls, but there have been a lot of extra booths and tents set up that have are housing a plethora of different games. As you guys take a look around, you see a couple of tents with designs for games. Their names range from like card sharks and then the aforementioned lizard races. There's even one that has to do what seems to be a tent just with a tank of water and some stones. In the distance, you see kind of a general kind of marketplace area where a variety of merchants are set up. But the, there are two things that kind of catch your mind. Smack dab in the center of where all this is going on and happening, you see a very colorful tent kind of plastered into the center just with odd knickknacks and a whole bunch of assortment of weird items in front of it. And even further in the distance, you see what seems to be a big top circus tent kind of propped up in the background. Currently, it's just you and the few merchants that are setting up and the proprietors of the game booths kind of just finishing setting everything up. So pretty much you have free reign to kind of explore as your heart wishes. So what would you guys like to do first? Excellent stonework on this bridge. <laughs> I must say the water runs underneath it quite well as well. It flows with a, a swiftness not seen when bridged by such masonry. Yeah, they did a good job of it. You said this first one is a merchant of sorts? And so, to kind of give an overview of the map, so while there is a lot of different places, there is a couple. Right near where you are fed in, this little small tent is actually a game booth. So anything outlined in kind of yellow are your games. And then, so yeah, so anything outlined in yellow are the games. There is something outlined in purple, which if you go there, we'll get to it. There's a general marketplace outlined in light blue. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Anything outlined in yellow is your game booths. And you're talking about character tokens that are outlined in yellow. Yes, that is correct. Okay. So in front of you guys, there's a couple of different gaming booths that you could go to and then slightly a little more inward of the uh, transform market area is that oddly colored tent with a bunch of knickknacks and things like that kind of just spread out in front. So what is this first game? As you step up on top of this tent, you just see, I'll be honest, it is not the most crafted well sign but it gets the point across and in front of it you just see plastered on the top of the sign kind of outlined in a poor man's version of a shark trying to eat a hand of cards it literally says card shark and as you look into the tent you see a humanoid figure kind of a uh, humanoid is the best way to describe it though it looks like he has pointed ears and his eyes look more cat-like. He is wearing a very nice kind of ornate maroon colored vest. But this individual is like, ah, yes. Uh, how may I help you? Can I fancy uh, you a little game of card shark, my friend? Explain the rules to me, my friend. Why, most certainly. There's nothing more like a good game of chance. And I happen to ha offer you that experience. So here's how this game's going to work. It'll be one on one or if you and your friends over there want to join, they may. But the goal of this game is to see if you can beat me. Now, I do have to warn you, there's a little bit of an entry fee. But uh, should you win and beat me in just a nice little game of cards, you get to keep all the gold that is collected. What do you say? Care to wager a little bit? I'd hear the rest of the rules of the game first. Ah, most certainly. OK, so this is DM. So let me explain how this is going to go down. <laughs> so the way that this game is going to work is basically both of us are going to roll. There's going to be a total of three rounds. So round one, we're each going to roll a D8. You're going to keep that number in mind, but we're not going to say anything to the other. 
Then we're going to go to the second round, and we're each going to roll a d6. Record that number, add that number to your first roll, but keep it secret from the other player. Round three, roll a d4. Same thing. The aim of the game is to have a bigger total than myself in order to win the game. Now, there are ways that you can give yourself a little bit of an advantage. If you can narratively explain how you use sleight of hand to kind of alter the outcome of the game for yourself, I will allow you to do that, which will offer you a reroll. And then you can also use the deception skill. And if you're successful, you can force the opponent to fold for the round. So essentially, that's how it works. The dice are going to decide whether or not you All end right. up being the winner or the loser with this one. Does that make sense? Beth, it's most wins out of three, highest roll wins? <laughs> it's more of whoever has the higher total. So after ah, all okay. three rounds, because for each dice that we roll from D8 to D6 to D4, we're going to add the grand total of that. If your total of those three dice rolls is higher than mine, you win. If mine is higher, I win, or the house wins. But if you don't like the roll that you got, if you can narratively explain how you use sleight of hand, then you will be allowed to re-roll for that particular roll. Okay. And, it, mm -hmm. and the entry fee, Fred? Mm, simply put, 10 gold. Ooh, 10 gold? That's, That's a, a hefty <laughs> fee for just a card game. We now know <laughs> what type of uh, people this particular carnival is trying to bring in. Shark really fits your... Fits your aren't tile we, there, friend. Aren't we also just testing these games? We're not actually playing them? The man has a good point. I thought we were supposed you guys were supposed to test them to, you know, earn services. I mean, granted you are testing them, and I also have to test it out for my guests, but uh the choice is yours. I you could ante up, and I'd be willing to match all of you if you wish, as he kind of pulls out a bag of coins and kind of just sets it onto the table in front. You can play without giving me any gold, but if you want to make it more interesting, there's nothing better than a game of chance, but the choice is up to you. I have a question. Yes, my friend. Can I see the deck of cards? Maybe look at the symbols and get to know what they look like. Most certainly. And from his pocket, he pulls out a unopened deck of cards and just hands it to you may i and i'm gonna he, and corvus is gonna gesture to want to open it okay he just nods in, in an approving manner so you can open it corvus is gonna open it um and he's gonna kind of shuffle through the cards and what does he see make me an investigate please oh boy <laughs> oh okay i have no intelligence so i have <laughs> zero i got a Hold up. It's a really big number. I got a whole total of seven. I mean, as you're kind of going through the deck of cards, Corvus, you don't necessarily see anything off. It looks like a standard deck of cards. It is nicely. The artwork on the back of each card is very nice. But other than that, it seems like a legit deck of cards. No oh, markings, no signs of cheating that you could tell anyways. So like if I went to Vegas right now and I saw a deck of cards, that's what I would be seeing in front of me right now. Like it has suits, like, of course, yep. like a fantasy theme. Yep. <laughs> so I would know what the highest value cards are, right? Would you? Would you? That's, why I, that's what I'm asking. Would I? I would say Corvus specifically, not really. I mean, his skills are more towards other things, but gambling isn't necessarily one of his strong suits. Okay. So looking at the deck and seeing those cards, whatever uh, I would I would say Corvus would think are the highest value cards, would I be able to maybe roll a maybe a deception or oh, a sleight of hand and try to cast Presidicitation on them and create a small mark to kind of like tell me which cards are what? So I know, like, if I fold, I need to fold. You know, I'm trying to cheat. It's all in, all in the name of fun. Ooh, that is definitely good. Okay, I will say this. So I will let you roll for it. However, I'm going to impose disadvantage only because, like I mentioned, 
Corvus's strengths lie elsewhere, and gambling is not necessary. While he has played a game of cards back at home, he hasn't gotten to experience the full extent of some of the more, mm, more riskier card games. So I will say that you can, but I'm going to have you do it at disadvantage. <laughs> and this okay. disadvantage is going to be, well, just roll for it and see what happens. I got a natural 20. <laughs> mm-hmm. And a nine. So it'd be a nine uh, plus three. That is 12. So I would have a 12. Okay. So then let me see if our good old card dealer. Yeah, because isn't prestigitation a verbal spell? <laughs> you have to chant something. Well, see, uh, that's you could, why. You could do a sneeze. You could do yeah. a sneeze. <laughs> I can do a quick cough. I'm trying to clear my hubba da dubba Um, sorry. <laughs> so, I will say this: you are able to mark what you deem as the the highest value of cards, but they're poorly, poorly, <laughs> poorly hidden into it. So, I'm assuming you give the deck back. Yeah, but I put the cards back into the thing and then hand it back. Okay, so you hand the. You hand the deck of cards back and the dealer just gives you a little smirk with his perception of 22 <laughs> and just says, right, then. Well, then, shall we get started, then? Opens up the deck of cards <laughs> again. Is this game one on one or is it like multiple people able to join in? Multiple people can join in if they like. So I'm up. I ain't got nothing else to lose. Same. OK, I'll go ahead and put 10. 10 down for it. Ooh. <laughs> so, so well, uh, Amino and his, uh, his mindset is not like I'm getting paid today anyway, so. I'll put 10 down, even though I just plainly cheated. Oh Listen. my gosh. So we have three players. Okay. So with the total of 30 gold, the dealer will match and put in 30, so the pot is now 60 gold pieces. Okay. So let us begin. So round one, take your D8 and roll. Record that number and keep it in mind and don't say it out loud. 19. (laughs) Oh, wait, is he? You can use deception to try to re-roll. Make it. If if you can narratively, because it's going to be sleight of hand, if you can narratively find a way to do it, I will let you roll for it. (laughs) All right. um, Real quick. Ominal sneezes cast in, uh, I can't pronounce it, but thaum- thaumaturgy, thaumaturgy, <laughs> however you pronounce it. And it I- sounds like something falls directly behind this guy trying to distract oh. him. Okay, so the sound comes from behind him. Oh, hold up. It look, kind of for a brief moment just turns around. So that's, that's sleight of hand or sleight of hand or deception or just sleight of hand? Uh, sl- just sleight of hand. All right, works for me. 23. Oh, definitely. That definitely succeeds. All right. That'll work. Okay. So go ahead. If you re-roll, you could re-roll that first one. (laughs) Okay. So round two, you are now going to get a D6. So when you roll, you're going to add that number to what you previously got and to keep that new total in mind. Mine's a 17. (laughs) I don't want to brag or anything. (laughs) It's like on a D6 day. (laughs) It's a magic D6. It's a 20 sided D6. It's a 20 sided D6. <laughs> okay. Final round D4. <laughs> okay. So now, now just all- for the cinematic purpose, is the dealer rolling a single set of dice the way a blackjack table would work? Or is this three one on one games going where he's got three sets of dice going? No, he's doing three on one. So he's going. <laughs> so blackjack. After- okay. Yep. All righty. So let's get those final totals. So uh, Amina, what is your final total? 14. Ooh, okay. So uh, Fedin? Fedin is a little bit of a proud gesture looking at Amino's hand and turns his over for a 16. Cool. And then Corvus? He's going to be like, I don't know what it means, but I got this. And it's going to be an 11. <laughs> oh, I love it. So the dealer looks at all three of your hands. He flips his over and just uh, looks at you, Fedin. Well played, my friend. He got. I ended up getting a 15, so beating me by one point. Fedin, you are the winner of this game. So he kind of just, the dealer just pushes 
the 60 gold over to you. He turns the two stacks of tin back to the other two players who bet it and takes the 40. And oh, you're the- so generous. <laughs> I don't know you, but I like you already. <laughs> Trust me, we all love him. By the first round, we'll call it even. Ooh. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> well, much appreciated for the game, friend. I'll <laughs> swing back by at the end, perhaps. Most certainly. I would love to play you again. <laughs> and he goes back to kind of fixing everything up, getting final touches ready. But dang, Feta, you made out like a bandit. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, so moving on to the next game. Uh, if everybody's staying with me or doing their own thing, what's going on? I'll tag along with you. All right. He gave me my money back. I'm following him. So. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and he, he, he turns back to the shipwright. By the by, Amino, I'm Ferret. Pleasure to meet your acquaintance. I'm a Noah kid. Pleasure to meet you. So tell us about this one at the uh, blue and silver striped tin. This fella. I don't know. Most... He, was, he was already walked off to the back of the fairground by himself. <laughs> he was just like, I'm exploring. We'll get to Hugh in a little bit. <laughs> so as you guys approach this next tent, inside you, underneath of this tent, you see a kind of circular kind of dirt track encased in kind of eh, a wooden arena a little bit. So this racetrack is kind of a smaller scale of like a traditional modern horse racing track. We I found would say. lizard racing. Yep, you found the lizard racing. So as you look at this track, you just see a female kind of uh, elf kind of handling one of the lizards. Just like, Shh, sh- it's OK, it's OK. And kind of looks at you. Ah, you must be the game testers. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, would you like to try your hand at some lizard racing? Well, do we get to see the lizards beforehand? Oh, most certainly. That's part of the fun. Uh, just give me a sec. And she kind of, from behind, she pulls out a little crate. She opens up the lid. Now, of course, this crate has holes in it. And there's some nice little bedding for the lizards and some food and water inside this thing. She's taking care of them. But as you look inside, you see that there are uh, there are about four lizards, uh, red, one's red, one's blue, one's yellow and one's green. And the, they are interesting to look at because they're wearing like number jerseys on them. And as you look closer at their feet, you can see that there's what looks to be some sort of shoes attached to them as well. <laughs> Lizard Nikes? Yeah, Lizard Nikes, essentially. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, th- there's just four lizards kind of just chilling in the box, and as the lid opens up, they look at you just like, what's up? <laughs> Can I do a nature check to see if I recognize them, if they've come from my home? Yeah, most certainly. Go ahead and give me a nature check. Okay. It's going to be just a flat 12. <laughs> okay. Actually. It's a 15. <laughs> Honestly, that actually helps. So with that 15, um, so Corvus, you're very familiar. You're feel ugh, you are familiar with these types of lizards. You as a kid would you and your siblings would catch them all the time and race with them. These are known as the Qon. It's a species of lizard that mostly thrives in the more warmer climates, but they are very intelligent, so if you teach them to a singular task, they are able to kind of do it without much effort. And knowing this information, for the most part, their temperament is very, very light, and they're very, I guess, kind-hearted animals. They don't really attack people. They're just chilling, and they're... unless. You try to take food from them, then it's the only time where they'll get a little snappy with you. But other than that, they're pretty well-mannered and well-tempered creatures. So using that, you could tell that this elven woman has taught these four specific lizards the singular task of how to race around a track. I see. 
I say that to everybody. <laughs> you just say I, I see animal handling. Mm-hmm. I'm taking a hand down there, so one of them kind of gives me a little high five. <laughs> Do I want to? Yes, give me animal handling to see if it bites your finger or if it gives you a high five. Also, animal handling to see if one of them appears to be a little bit better shape or faster than the other three. Sure, go for it. 16. (laughs) Damn. That'll be a dirty 20. Damn. Okay, so we'll resolve this. I will say simultaneously, fed in... Well, Fedin, you're looking into the box as uh, Dedek is uh, picking up or reaching his hand in. So the blue lizard kind of gives you a little high five, Dedek, after sniffing your hand a little bit. And then just with its little lizard paws, just like, I'm now Fedin for (laughs) Fedin for you. As you take a look at the four, all of them are pretty good to go. Um, Except you notice that the red one kind of looks like it's. I can't believe I'm using this term, but the red lizard looks to be a little bit stronger. You could see that its little lizard calf muscles are a little bit more swoller than the other ones. <laughs> you didn't skip leg day. It didn't skip leg day. Uh, I'm getting an image of four tie-dyed iguanas in the gym lifting Q-tips. <laughs> yes. Exactly what it is. You see just the Q-tips, like, surrounding this little cage. <laughs> it's like, pump the iron. <laughs> Instead of iron. All right. Uh, you know, I, your lizard is playing in the background. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. So, how does this work? Set bets before they're in, after they're in, during the race. <laughs> what are the odds? Uh, oh, most certainly. Well, let me explain. So here's how the game works. So once again, DM hat coming on to to explain this to you. So the way that this game works is, is that everyone who wants to participate in this with the lizard. So there's four of them. So four of you can participate. You each will roll a D4. So I will be describing how the race is going. But the way that it works is, is that we divide this race into three sections so at each section each of you will roll a d4 and then i will narrate how the race is going then we'll repeat that for the second roll which is another d4 and the third roll so basically you want to end up with the highest total by the end of this race in order for your lizard to win so this okay. is gonna be a great time <laughs> sounds like fun go on Omino Omino looks kind of behind him, assuming that the gas man is still following him and (laughs) doesn't like Omino doesn't see color. So he's like, uh, so we we, random voice in my head. Which one are we picking? Are we taking the last one left over? I can't see color. You know, this cloud kind of floats over one uh, DM's (laughs) choice. (laughs) Thank you. Okay, so. Fedin's picking the red one, so let's see which color you guys get. I'm okay. gonna go with my you guys get... <laughs> Okay. So that is perfect because that gives <laughs> Amino that gives you the yellow one. And yeah, I'll get like whatever's question. left. <laughs> so yeah, so with that, so the yellow's taken. So you have green, Corvus. <laughs> Just like me. Alrighty. So if the four of you are ready. Each of you place your lizard at the starting gate. They start stretching like their muscles. <laughs> Get their feet in the chalks ready to go. Yep. They're like doing one like of good th- morning stretches. <laughs> yeah. One of them like gets like the racing powder, even though it's not gymnastics, just puts it on their hands and just the, does the clap. It's like. <laughs> One's kind of doing jumping. Jog- and they're red. And trot- trotting in place there for a second. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is great. So yeah, so here we go. So they assume the starting positions and the elven woman kind of just like on your mark, get set and kind of in front of them is like this little gate and go. She lifts it up and then they start booking it. Okay, so I need all four of you to please roll me a D4 and then we'll go and figure out (laughs) your values for it. Okay, we'll start with Amino. Two. Cool. Fed in. Four. Oof. Corvus. Three. Oof. And then Dedek. Four. Oh, Jesus. 
Okay. So they announced this like one of those announcers guys like at the fair. And then all of a sudden, like out of nowhere, you just hear someone use thaumaturgy to <laughs> ampl Oh no, the elven woman just uses thaumaturgy to amplify the voice. But then it changes. It, it went from this <laughs> Exactly. It's like her more like docile, like, oh hello. It kind of says like and they're off. It's just it's like <laughs> it's just insane. So and they're and they're off. We have red kind of taking the lead, but oh, what is this? As she's just describing it. So basically, what's happening is that Fed and your red one just takes off as soon as that gate goes up. So as your red one is kind of running around the track, it takes a look behind it and it sees that it's being closely followed behind your lizard Dedic, and then right behind that one is yours, uh, Corvus. I don't know, yours is unfortunately in dead last. It like there was a moment of hesitation as the gate goes up and it's just like, bam, and it's just like, oh, wait, yeah, let's go. And so as re as Vidin as your lizard and Dedic as your lizard are kind of neck and neck. Oddly enough, they start trying to like nudge and push each other <laughs> off. It's like, pff, pff. It's like, whoa, we got some contact going in, in here with this race. This is like, hands off, boys, hands off. You know better. All righty. So here we go. Next. So now we're entering the second stretch. So go ahead and roll your D4 again. OK, so Amino. Three. OK, fed in. Two. Ooh. Corvus. Four. Damn. <laughs> and then last but not least, Dedic. Three. Oof. OK, so in the second stretch. <laughs> It's like, and we have a little bit here. We have we have red taking the lead, but oh, what is this? Green coming out of nowhere, kind of closing in the gap with our racers. But don't count out yellow or blue yet because they are still trudging along. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now entering the final stretch. What is about to go down? This could be anyone's race. It is coming down to the wire. Hold your horses, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a photo finish. Okay. Final stretch. So go ahead and roll me that last D4. Alrighty. So let's go. So I'm going to. So I. Uh, so what? So the grand total. F oh, man. That's you. Poor man. You poor man. Don't blame me. I blame the lizard. <laughs> okay. Fed in. Four. Yeesh. Corvus. One. Oh, no. And then Dedic. Three. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen. It's like ladies and gentlemen. This is like, we're coming down to a photo finish. They're all so close, but oh, what is this? Amino, your lizard and Corvus's lizard, like they end up trying to push each other, but they end up tripping over each other. And then it's this <laughs> <laughs> like they both get tripped up and start rolling forward in like in a comical fashion. Then they're like body skid across <laughs> and kind of just slow and stop. As the other two lizards kind of jump over them and pass them by. Ladies and gentlemen, red and blue are neck and neck. Red and blue are neck and neck. But oh, what is this? What is red doing? Oh, he is sticking out his tongue. He is sticking out his tongue, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a photo finish. And as both of them cross simultaneously, you just see a little flash kind of <laughs> happen. And as all of you look at the kind of less s silent image version of this. You see that fitted your lizard just by the c tongue as it was sticking out, reaching the finish line has been declared the winner. So once fed in, you are yeah, the winner are of this. List. <laughs> exactly. Literally pulled a Yoshi to win this one. <laughs> so oh, yeah. as the lizards are kind of like chilling and cooling off, they for some reason they pull out fans and start fanning themselves. <laughs> Blue puts like one of those around lizards. his neck. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Again, I stick my hand yeah, very very down, give him a little high five, like, "Hey, you, uh, you, you, you fought a good race." <laughs> Gets the little high five. It's the elvish woman comes up to you, back to Norma. She's like, "Ah, all right, boys. So let's get you all rested up and ready for when our guests arrive." And she kind of turns to you. Thank you so much for, for testing this game out for me. Absolutely. I'm surprised that the, the as she kind of looks at the lizards inside, my babies appreciate it. And uh, it was a good pregame workout. So I'm excited to see what kinds of things happen when more people show up later. But 
if you ever want to race them again, or, and she kind of looks at you, Fedden, if you want to, are you familiar with the larger versions of these creatures? We use them in the mines, uh, the riding geckos. Yeah, if you ever want to witness some riding gecko tournaments, and she kind of pulls out a little card and gives it to you, Fedden, make sure you stop by. There's always different tournaments going on, especially on the island of Twindale. So if you ever find yourself in Twindale, make sure you stop by and we'll get you hooked up with some actual riding experience. Sounds like a plan. To wait. Sounds like a proposition. And tomato, tomato. <laughs> Thank you for the rice, love. Pay for the whole seat, I'll use the edge. <laughs> but of course. Now then. I, I do believe as she kind <laughs> she accepts them. Thank you kindly. I, I, I just I just look, look at her and say that that was that was actually a lot of fun to watch. Take care of these little guys. Oh yeah, guys. I will. As she kind of goes back to fixing up everything. Meanwhile, <laughs> so Hugh, <laughs> you find yourself kind of just walking around. It's a lovely day. I've been taking in the sights and the sounds and enjoying myself. <laughs> uh, so, for you specifically, you're just taking in the sights, you're taking in the sounds. You find yourself at mm, one of the kind of... Okay, I have to ask this as a DM question. So, would Hugh know anything about merry-go-rounds? I doubt it. Hugh's intelligence is not very high. <laughs> So probably not. Okay. What, so what is, what is this game that I've come to see here? I feel like it's it's racing small wooden animals. Do they animate? How do I do this? Well, my friend, it's not necessarily that you race around, but it is a ride for mostly younger children. But I, uh, I was told here that I have to had to to practice and to uh, you know test out all of the games. Uh, how does one win at a merry-go-round? Well, it's not necessarily a game. It's more of a ride. I There must be a way to have a winning condition. Even it, uh, perhaps uh, uh, if, if your uh, steed comes around the, the entire uh, circumference first, perhaps there is a, a prize of some sort. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, that's not how... It, I'll tell you what. There is a wind condition. Sure. If you enjoy yourself, you pick one of these animals, and if you can enjoy yourself while doing so, then you win the game. It's a little simple, so on you know when it comes to that. But one of these animals is, uh, let's just say, the lucky one. And if you happen to pick the right one, I guess you win. I will play your game, game master. <laughs> Most certainly. Well, my friend. You may pick any animal to ride, to make the best choice. So Hugh, as you get on this merry-go-round, there is a plethora of creatures, but I'm just going to let you decide what, I probably know the answer to this, but what animal does Hugh choose to ride on? A seahorse. <laughs> yeah, that tracks. So as you settle onto the seahorse, the ride operator, he begins to flip a couple of knobs and switches. And at first, the merry-go-round kind of just like sputters to start as like a, a little sudden jerk. But then it starts to move slowly around and around. And as it begins to pick up, your seahorse begins to go up and down, up oh my. and down. Oh my. And... As you are riding your seahorse, from above you, you hear, it's not necessarily the best, but you hear a little bit of kind of music going around, very light and airy, carnival-ish style. And as this is playing, you're just continuing to go in a circle with your seahorse going up and down for about a minute or so before your seahorse begins to slow down. And the merry-go-round begins to slow down until it comes to a sudden stop. Is, is that the end of, of the ride? D did I win? Did you enjoy yourself? I'm not quite sure. I was paying attention to too many things at once. <laughs> I may need another round on it. Well, most certainly. 
and he begins to start it up again. And once again, the same thing happens. And then it begins to slow down. Again, I have not fully enjoyed myself yet. This is an effective sort of game. Um, perhaps if I change steeds. Let's try this again. I love it. All right, so what animal do you get on this time? A sea turtle. Okay. As soon as you sit on the sea turtle, you swear you hear righteous dude. Like, just uh, coming out of nowhere. <laughs> You're welcome. I, t I, t I turn to the, the operator. Again, let's do this again. So, once again, he continues and... You f are on the sea turtle. A couple minutes pass by, and then it stops again. No, this is not enjo less enjoyable. This was less. I, I felt like I was riding on something harder. Give me a better steed. <laughs> so we'll say that you continue this until you ride you the entire merry-go-round. Every <laughs> exactly. animal tries exactly. them all. <laughs> so as you get onto the last one. <laughs> I, would, I never thought I would enjoy riding a marmot. Let's give this a shot. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to catch my breath here. The tail is, is a little ostentatious. It is riding up my backside, but I will, I will see this one. I, I, I see you've probably created this for a smaller person, but I need to give everything a chance. And so far out of the, you know, 35 different animals I've ridden, this one is not, is, is, is the least chance, but is the last one. So, proprietor, throw the switch. Make that happen. So this ride operator is not even upset. He's just more like bored as comically puts his hand on his face, resting against it and just flips the switch. And the merry-go-round once again goes around. A few minutes pass by and then it stops again, coming to a halt. That was exhilarating. I finally understand the point of this game. The marmot was for me and it took me until the end. I appreciate this. The ride operator just looks at you. Well, you enjoyed yourself, so I count that as a win. I would suggest for future riders, you point them to the correct animal for them in the first place. Having choice truly makes this a harder game to win. I will keep that in mind, my good sir. And as Hugh is exiting this, and he's a bit dizzy now, he's gone through 35 different rotations of this. <laughs> what you see behind him as the camera pans that way is that there's a pamphlet on every single animal. He has left Motherfucker. <laughs> and Mikey, you said that, that we're really the only other people here besides the vendors and all of them. Yeah, it's pretty much just you and the game masters who are running the games, as well as some of the other vendors. Speaking of which, you. So and that as you're <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So let me get through this part. So Hugh, as you are getting your what's it called? As you're Bearing. getting your bearings and your equal equilibrium kind of uh back in order at first you see double vision of a strangely dressed gentleman kind of in front of you and then as your vision kind of comes back in here you see in front of you as i mentioned a weirdly dressed individual he is kind of wearing a very large black and white top hat he has a maroon looking coat his face is plastered with like white makeup as well with white gloves, but his sleeves are the same maroon color as his jacket, but the sleeves kind of stop at the halfway point with matching black and white kind of like arm coverings to boot maroon color pants, very uh, black and white kind of boots on walking around with a cane. Did you enjoy yourself on the merry-go-round, my friend? Uh, I finally won the game, if that's what you're asking, yes. <laughs> yes, it does take a bit of getting used to, but it seems that you've cracked the secret. It only took 35 rides. Oof, that it's is a crazy. bit of a dedication, but you still won nonetheless, my friend. Ah, where are my manners? He kind of takes his top hat off. My name is Valentine, and I'm one of the merchants here. I heard that you and a couple of your other friends were uh, checking everything out to make sure everything was good to go. Would you and your... Go ahead, sorry. A pleasure to make your acquaintance, Valentine. Uh, yes, you are correct. <laughs> well then, would you and your friends care to take a look around my shop real quick? I've been dying to sell this new inventory I got, and I think you and your friends might be the best customers to get a sneak peek at all this first. 
Uh, I appreciate that uh, I will have to confer with them before I can speak for, on their behalf, but I, I will do my best once I my uh, entire equilibrium comes back to full uh, to stumble my way to your establishment. Which one is it, by the way? Oh, most certainly. It is quite near the entrance, surrounded by a whole bunch of crates. And in fact, I believe your friends are next to the lizard racing tent where my stuff is currently there as well. Uh, so, wonderful. If you, well, you head your way there, and once I can make the world stop spinning, I will join them. Of course. And he kind of, with the cane, kind of twirls it around his finger, kind of humming to himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting disapproving. John is giving me a disapproving look. <laughs> you, listen, you, you know, you, you listen, you know, I'm weird. <laughs> it's, it's not. There's nothing weird about it. It just that makes complete sense. Um. Hugh will wander the best he can on the way over. He hasn't been over to where the lizard tent is, so he has no idea where it is. So he's just going <laughs> to wander around until he finds it. <laughs> and so after some time, Hugh, you find your way over to the lizard tent where your compatriots are kind of finishing up with what they just got done. So the rest of you see a kind of wobbly Hugh kind of walk towards you as most of his equilibrium has gotten back to him but there's a few instances where he's walking straight and then he kind of veers to the left a little bit, corrects himself and then veers to the right a little bit until he finds his way back to you guys. <laughs> you, you know, you know, it's not very healthy to start drinking during the day. It's not even, he looks at his wrist that obviously doesn't have a watch. Not even five o'clock yet. You can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. True. It's very true. Uh, I agree with both of you on your salient points. Unfortunately, this is not an effect of uh, an alcoholic drink on me today. Uh, this is uh, more the uh, <laughs> the beauty of nature and how one moving through space can affect your perception of it, I believe. Fell out of a tree, did you? I wish it were that simple. I did win a game, though. I, I, I played my first game at this carnival and I definitely won. It just took a few tries. Excellent, excellent. What game was it? They called it Merry Go Round. You chose and the moment, didn't you? How did you know? I won the same game years ago. Oh, I did not know I was in the presence of a, a skilled player. I should have come to you first for strategy, because I spent way too much time on there. No, not strategy. I did the same thing. What is a merry go round? Oh, you have Fadden to. Fadden is quietly laughing off to the side. You have to play it at some point, Corvus. You would truly enjoy it. You would fit on every steed they have. It is a, such a great riding game. A steed? Yes. Of different you. shapes and types. It was beautiful. Beg pardon, here. Yeah. Of course. I copied the wrong accent there. Hang on. <clears throat> Beg your pardon, you. Right. Oh, I yes. do. I keep going into our new friend Amino's accent. Sorry, suppose I have it. <clears throat> it's as if you're both from some sort of European country that sounds similar to each other. I'm going to try not to take offense to that, but uh, out of curiosity... How many of your pamphlets are left? Oh, uh, quite a few. Mm. And Ferrin continues to walk on towards the next area. Uh, I was told we must visit a merchant tent of a man who looks like he came out of the inside of a drying machine. Uh, I believe his name was Valentin. Or Valentin. Um, he, he truly looks as if someone dressed him in the dark and he truly appreciated it. Did he say where the tent was? I have no clue. He told me to meet you here. So, as you guys take a look around, Hugh, it's not hard to make out Valentine as kind of pretty much right behind the lizard racing tent. You see that oddly colored tent with a bunch of boxes and wares and knickknacks all kind of laid out. Hugh does not weirdly say about, about it. Hugh does not point it out. Hugh doesn't do anything at all. He just waits. Cool. I, I, perhaps he'll stop by again. He seems to be walking the grounds. I have... I do not know where, where his tent could be. But if you all would like to come with me, we can go play merry-go-round. You probably will win just as easy as I have. Perhaps. <laughs> Sounds very intriguing. Doesn't it, though? I don't know about the whole motion thing. Well, I can teach you the ways uh, so you don't spend 35 rotations on it. <laughs> 35 rotations? That's how long it took me to win. That's at least 34 too many. That's mm -hmm. what I said afterwards. But at least I felt the exhilaration at the end. Sounds very challenging, this game. It was. It was. It took a lot of stamina, a lot of fortitude. Impressed. Very impressed. 
Oh, what if we get like Tidak to go on it one day? I don't know if he'd be able to handle it. I mean, he, he gets sick when you know he steps in a puddle. Yeah, it would be a shame. I wonder what Steed he'd done. Mm. I have to ask him at that point. Varen, you 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 seem to be crying. Uh, is anything all? Is everything all right? <laughs> I think of something sad. No, 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 nothing of the sort. Just pollen. We don't. We dwarves don't normally deal with such things below ground. Of course, of course, of course. Allergies can be a truly horrific thing to take on as you experience a new place. I understand that. So, uh, what's our next plan, gents? Uh, I am. Ret- I am uh, not really looking forward to getting back on the merry-go-round, but if I must show you how this game works, I will do so. Oh, man. Anyone else? Let's- oh, you got me. You convinced Why me. Why not? Let's-, Let's go take a look at your merry. <laughs> that so does I- I go lead- around. lead them back to the merry-go-round. Okay. So you make your way back to the merry-go-round. The first thing that you see is that, at least from what you can see, the- pretty much all the animals on the merry-go-round have some sort of hand flit attached to them about Dagon. The operator looks at you, Hugh, and looks at the rest of you. Are you here to win the game as well? I have mm. told them of the wonders of this game, and they are all ready to play. Uh, Hugh, <laughs> I have a question. Of course. Can you enlighten me on how this operator has entrapped these steeds to stay in I this am... and to go into a, a seat, uh, the circumference of whatever? I am not sure how the magic of this works. You must ask the operator themselves. All I know is that they stay on track. They do bob up and down. So there is movement. It's not just riding on a piece of wood. It's, it's, it's animated. It's beautiful. Theron, in a old man's jest, leans down to the chorus and says, Beware of the nails, lad. Why would there be nails on animals? Go how how else do you keep them in place? <clears throat> Can, uh... Can uh, Amino Cat uh, do an Arcana check to see what magic is holding in place? Sure. <laughs> 17. I mean, <laughs> just... <laughs> he's ridden this before. He knows about it. He says he's a professional. Understand. I've got to trust his word. He doesn't understand it, though. That's the thing. He's like, I wrote it, but I don't know why they're still in place. <laughs> hmm. Oh, why the fuck not? This is going to be funny. So, Amino, you're looking intently at this merry-go-round, and you probably get the inkling there might be some sort of conjuration magic happening here. That it's not even that these animals are stuck in place. It's more that they are not here to begin with, that something is keeping me tied to this plane of existence. Or at least so you think that's what's happening. (laughs) As he's doing that, he is slowly moving toward the marmot. Please, go for it. I know you will enjoy it. Oh my gosh, I love it. So, Amino is going for the marmot. The rest of you, I'm assuming, are getting on <laughs> some sort of animal. <laughs> With your stupidity, I'd like to get me on a snail. Armor, I'm going for a horse. <laughs> oh my gosh, so we got a horse, we got a snail. I would like to ride the owl bear again. I did not get on its shoulders as easily as last time. You Would you like me to help you onto the shoulders there? I would appreciate any boost you can give me. Oh my gosh, and then Fetid, which one are you getting on? So after giving Hugh an actual boost... (laughs) You don't know how strong I am. I don't weigh that much. (laughs) It's more of a height thing. Dwarves are taller than goblins. It's very true. It's very true. They are not taller than half-orcs, but they are taller than goblins. Okay. Uh, Every merry-go-round has one. He walks over to the bench. (laughs) <laughs> damn damn very damn. interesting animal <laughs> once animated it truly can be you know a real pain in the ass to deal with oh my gosh this is so this is great so all of you get on and the operator less annoyed this time around he actually smiles a little bit flips on the switch and the merry-go-round begins to go a little bit except he lets it go a little bit more last for a couple more minutes than normal as you guys are enjoying yourself, just smiling and enjoying each other's company as you are trying to discover the secrets of the merry-go-round. And that, my friends, is where we're going to end the session tonight. <laughs> I was going to say, as soon as it starts to, the merry-go-round starts to move, I pull my sword out and point it in front of me and yell, Chaw! Oh my gosh, yes. And as it's going around, 
using Mage Hand, Amino is switching out some of the pamphlets with pamphlets that say, "Have you heard of the Lord? Have do you heard of the Great Destroyer in our Lord Cthulhu?" Just a few. Uh, <laughs> but they're oh dry. my goodness, that they're is like so brittle dry though. They're like yeah, they're they are dry as hell. They're brittle. Like I lay them down, and I have to do like two or three per because they keep cracking, and falling apart. Oh Jesus. I think between the two of us, we'll have like an Innsmouth packet that'll do really well. Between the two of you, you'll probably have a freaking cracker. <laughs> oh my gosh. Maybe a biscuit. I don't know. Hard, hard tack. Oh my goodness. But that, ladies and gentlemen, those, those of you who stuck with us, that is the end of this particular episode. When we pick up next time, we will continue with our, well, I guess we could call it now, we will continue with the Scorch Shields uh, progress as, as they continue to explore this fairground. M- Mike, and- did we win the merry-go-round? Did we all win? No. Yeah, you know I- what? As the last bit of narrative, you all won the merry-go-round. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. But First that try. will conclude tonight. So for those of you that stuck with us, thank you for listening. We're sorry. <laughs> We're, I'm not. This is great. <laughs> Remember, everyone, take care of each other, love one another, and as always, let the good times roll. Until next episode, see you later. Doodle. Bye. 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 This has been the Call of the Deep podcast. To support us, please subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you download your auditory escapism in podcast form. And, while you're there, leave us a five-star review. Even our intrepid characters are no match for the insidious algorithm, especially without your ability to cast aid on our stats. The music in this episode was Prepare for War by Alexander Makarado. You can find all his music at serpentsoundstudios.com. Tune in next time for more hijinks from the darkest depths of the sea on the call of the deep.